the wrong button. <laughs> um, I thought we'd try and get a bit organised. I thought we'd try and get a bit organised. So we're actually, oh my goodness, Feedy Friday, renovation recipes. We're early. We're early. Well, Ard. Well, Ard, you're early too. This is unheard of. <laughs> oh, absolutely unheard of. So I thought I'd just um, go live a little bit early to give a few of you a chance to join in um, before Nick arrives. Have you got your ingredients? Give me a thumbs up then. Give me a thumbs up if anybody's actually cooking along with us. So, this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to use an Italian recipe. In fact, I'll let, I'll let Nick talk you through it. But I've got my recipe there. Or I've got my ingredients. I've pretty much got all the ingredients here. We'll just hang fire until... Tenuta Marmorelli join in. How are you all doing today? Friday. Weather's turned a little bit, hasn't it? I think that this afternoon we're going to um, go back to... Well, I think I'm going to go back to the rental flat and do a little bit more decorating because it's a little bit nippy in Manchester. What's it like where you where you lot are? Um, but I think we'll have our excellent lunch first. Somebody asked me... Um, this morning, I'll carry on picking the tails off my spinach... In a bit, somebody asked me this morning actually if um, if the content content if this that we do with this that we're doing with Tanita Marmorelli is sponsored or paid advertising. I think you know it's better than that, don't you? No, London is mighty fine, says Made by Sixty Eight Limited. Have you finished your table? Did you finish making your table? Um, no, it's not sponsored. Um, I'll explain in a minute when when uh, Nick comes live and asks to join in how I kind of how we more just mentions got connected with them. I think some of you know already, you might have read the posts. But um no, it is not sponsored. Um in fact I've just realised that I my prawns are still in the freezer. One second because Nick hasn't joined in yet, so hang on one sec. Let me get my prawns. seafood and I actually I actually didn't um suggest or insist on seafood you, you lot know we love our seafood our seafood sign our travels on your homemade perfect um I didn't come up with the recipe Nick Nick did this <laughs> like prawns kitchen so if you and somebody put last week um that they were going to deck out and leave because they're allergic to seafood so I'm really sorry if prawns aren't your thing but I'm sure you can substitute this for another another um, meet of some description. Let's let's ask Nick when he joins in. One second. London is my fine. Hang on a minute. Oh, you've got a month to go. Made by Sixty Eight Limited on your table. Is this a dining room table that you make of yourself? Is it? Are you making it for somebody else? There we go. Tenuta Mamarelli has just joined. There we, and we have a request. Oh, 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 we're ready to go live. You request. So normally we've been doing baking, haven't we, with Michelle? Um, and this is a it's a commission. This is a new one. Hello. Hi, yeah. How are you? Hello, hello. How are you doing? Yeah, good. You? I'm fine. So um, everybody, this is Nick from Tanuta Marmorelli. I know. Am I saying it correctly, Nick? Very well. Yeah, you're doing really, really well. Yeah, Tanuta Marmorelli. Um, you're going to have to, you're, you've, you've been decapitated there. You might have to lift your phone up a little bit. Or maybe move it back a little bit. Can you see me now? I can, I can. I can see you as well. It's not just a discombobulated voice. Where are you cooking from? At uh, Reading. And are you at, you're at home? I'm at home, yeah, yeah. It's you're different at home. Friday to normal, but yeah. It's what, sorry? A different Friday to normal. We're all living different lives to normal, though, at the minute, though, aren't we, right? Um, yeah. So I'll just explain to people joining in um, how we met, although, bizarrely, we haven't actually ever met, and this is the first time first time I've seen you. Um, there's a really fantastic Italian restaurant in Manchester called Sugo Pasta, and Mr. Rogers and I go off, and then we've been for family, birthdays, etc. And obviously they're closed at the minute, and... Um, the guys at Sugo sent an email out a few weeks ago just connecting their customers with a few of their suppliers. 
one of whom was Tanuta Mamarelli. And when I read the email and I clicked on a couple of the links, as we do, and got a bit of time in our hands, clicked on a couple of the links. Um, we're all fighting for great ingredients, aren't we? And one of the things, I mean, you, I'm going to ask you about your company, but it's fresh pasta. And so, you know, queuing up for supermarkets, bit of a nightmare. So I went on and decided that I was going to order some fresh pasta for me and also for some for our tenants. So we held a little bit of a cooking competition. So yeah. we ordered, and it was so delicious. And we got talking then on social media, and it's become quite organic, hasn't it, how we've kind of yeah. connected. Um, so, no, in answer to somebody else's question, it's not sponsored content. Um, you know, I haven't had a shed load of pasta sent to me by Nick. <laughs> you know, and we've bought all the, all the pasta, and it's amazing. So I already put some of you, some of you seen it on the grid, and I highly recommend it. We've also tried the risotto and a few other, few other bits. Um but we just decided that actually it would be really nice for Nick to come up with a recipe because one of the things we do here is the renovation recipe. So fast, easy food, delicious food that you can cook while you're renovating that is quite affordable and and quick to do. You know, it doesn't take much effort or much washing up. So so this is Nick and here you are. Most Italian dishes are very simple to do. Uh, Italians just rely basically on good ingredients. That's the basis for Italian food. So Italians don't use lots of spices, um, anything like that. They use the best ingredients they can. Small amounts of those ingredients are the best ones that they can get. So that's the most so important. Tell us a little bit about, just before we get cracking with the with the recipe, tell us a little bit about um, your company and how, kind of how it got started. Because it's really, you, you were telling me earlier this week, and it's a really lovely story. Yes, so basically, um, my grandparents are from Puglia in southern Italy. Um, have you been to Puglia? I haven't been to Puglia. I've been to lots of places in Italy, but not Puglia. That's the boots, um, isn't it, at the bottom? Yeah, yes, yeah, the heel of the boot. So um, it's really nice because it's a peninsula, so it's um, surrounded by coastlines. So it's really nice for summer holidays, when everyone can get out and go on summer holidays again. Um, but um, So they're from Puglia. They moved to um, Reading in the 50s. Basically, there wasn't very much work in the south of Italy, so you could work... In, um, in the UK if you actually did manual labour for three years. So my grandfather actually worked with, uh, went to work in the mines in Cardiff um, and he was in the coal mines for three years and then that gave him permission to work in the UK. So then he started working as a plasterer in the UK um, and um, basically that's where the sort of whole family thing came from. I've been going to Puglia since I was born. Um, so uh, we've actually got a place out there. So my parents live in Puglia. And we've got a olive grove where we produce extra virgin olive oil. Um, so this is what started the whole business. So right. How long ago was that? How long ago did the business start? The business started six years ago. Right. Um, we actually bought the derelict farmhouse about 12 years ago. It took six years to, uh, to restore. Um, we all know that feeling. Got lots of renovators on our feet, so we all, we all feel your pain. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was only supposed to take a few years, but it ended up being six. Um, as, as all building projects do, they sort of overrun and overrun our budget as well. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's obviously harder to restore something than to build something from, from scratch. Yeah. So um, keeping in, in sort of like um, in tradition with the building, um, respecting all the regulations, all those sorts of things. With the uh, farmhouse became 600 uh, century old olive trees. So we've got. Um, as it does. Yeah, and lots of almond trees as well. Um, so we've got lots of olive trees. Um, so what we used to do was press uh, the oil, take it to uh, take it to the cooperative, send it back to them, and then we thought, no, there's got to be some better way of doing this. So uh, we actually researched how to the best way of making olive oil, and the best way is to sort of pick it directly from the tree. So you pick it like you would an apple. We have it very very early in the year, so the olives never touch the ground and they're cold pressed the same day. Um, this gives all the health benefits to the oil. So basically, when you talk about cold pressed olive oil, you're trying to keep it cold all the time. That's the whole yeah. As soon as you start heating it up, you will lose the health benefits. Um, olive oil is one of those things that um, it's got loads of health benefits um, um, for Alzheimer's, for cancers, for things like that, but it has to be good olive oil. So um, that's what started the business six years ago. We entered it into the Great Taste Awards and it won two stars in the Great Taste Awards. It also won gold in the New York International Olive Oil Competition. So you just started the company and then, boom, you were winning awards. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, was a bit like that. A bit of a shock, really. We just entered it. We sent one bottle to the to the Gear of the Fine Foods. And, um, yeah, it's um, a really good process. If you ever get the chance to judge the, the Great Taste Awards, it's blind tasting, so you don't know what you're going to have. You could be having right. oil or chocolate or whatever. And then you just award it what you think. So one star would be 
this is really good. Two stars, this is amazing, I'll tell my friends. And three stars is you tell everybody. Yeah. Um, that's the maximum you can get. But yeah, no, that's you, got lots of, you got lots of three stars. And then and then how did you how did it then move into pasta and you were importing oil into the UK then? Importing oil into the UK, yeah. So we started off with the oil. So just cold calling basically, um, farm shops, delis, food halls, those sorts of things. Um, and a friend of ours in the same town in Puglia produces really good pasta. So he said, Well, I'm producing pasta and you're taking over olive oil bring over my pasta, then it all just starts from there. We say gluten-free pasta, um, balsamic vinegar, um, antipasti items, everything really, uh, up to one that we've also got now, which is launching on the site on Tuesday. Um, but it all grew very organically, really. It was more sorts of, we're responding to what people wanted, but our ethos is finding the best products we can from Italy. Okay. So it has to be the best of the best. And it's interesting when you, you just touched on the fact that um, you were going out and when you started the business, you're going out and cold calling at market halls and food halls. And that's actually how we found you because because that is your those are your primary customers, not just necessarily selling to the public. Yeah. Sugo Pasta was sharing your details because all of a sudden when lockdown happened and when this whole COVID-19 thing happened, all of a sudden everyone's just stopped buying, presumably. That was it. That your your customers just kind of, of course, they didn't dry it up forever, but they just stopped buying. Yeah, well, we've got, um, from one day to the next, we had lots and lots of fresh pasta, um, cannoli shells. There's uh, another restaurant that would be taking like a thousand cannoli shells a week. Yeah. Um, and that just stopped. So um, we, we tried to sort of, um, and Sue will be really, really generous sharing the information. Yeah. That. Yeah. It's so difficult for a business that doesn't look to the public to actually try and interact with the public um, especially with social media and things it just it takes a long time it takes nice people like yourself to um, actually try and promote these businesses because there is a lot of food especially yeah. at the moment the UK cheese industry as well it needs a lot of help um, there's a lot of people that would normally have gone to restaurants and eat very very quickly which is going to yeah. well, update very quickly so if we and actually, to... hopefully, this, you know, yours is fresh pasta. You'd mentioned um, the cheese. Actually, you know, Neil's yard are doing quite a lot, aren't they? With, well, I put some on my stories about Mrs. Kirkham's Lancashire cheese. Uh, fish as well. We yeah. actually produce so much amazing produce in this country, and a lot of it gets exported over straight to restaurants. And it's amazing, actually, that homeowners, that we, the public, are more aware and don't buy it direct as opposed to just going through supermarkets. I think that's this whole thing might change that, might it? I think it, I think it would. I think it will take the UK back to how it was a good sort of generation ago, where people would go to the local butcher and go to the fish and support the local businesses. Because I know that when, when we go back to Italy and things, you go to the butcher and you say to the butcher, like, I'm going to make this today, or the fishmonger, and he'll say, well, try this, or add this, or this is really fresh, have this, yeah. or come back tomorrow. Um, yeah. Well, but when we first moved over to uh, to Italy, um, I actually lived out there for 10 years, and my father wanted um, some um, orange juice. So he wanted oranges to um, to make orange juice with. He went in July, and the, the, fruit, the fruit guy said, we'll come back in October. He said, there's no <laughs> oranges now. We're going to be right there, so we don't have them, so... Okay. We're used to that, yeah. And in this country, it's become, and a lot of there, it's become very much kind of, oh, I want it on demand. So if I want asparagus in December, then fly at me from Peru. And actually, there's something that's, you know, seasonal produce. There's a reason why it's so amazing. We're cooking with, on, on Sunday, I'm cooking with David Crichton, uh, our master chef contestant, and we're doing Jersey, Ro Jersey Royals. We're doing Jersey yeah. Royal salad. Because those are just coming into season. Yeah. And it is about this. It's about, we've become quite blasé, haven't we, about shipping food, you know, millions of miles all around the world constantly. And it's not good, is it? It's not no. good. It's not good for the planet. It's not good for, yeah. yeah. I think I sort of understand now about the carbon footprint of, and also, when you actually do taste them, they don't taste them anything because they're not fresh. Um, so they'd be harvested when they're not supposed to be harvested, they are ripen as they come along, I think. So it's better to have things that are in season, things that are fresh. It's that classic thing, isn't it? When we go on holiday and we eat a tomato salad and we go, oh, this tomato salad's amazing. Tomatoes don't taste like this at home. <laughs> or, you know, potatoes. And that's why, isn't it? Because they're stored in a in an aircraft hangar for God knows how long and the flavour just dissipates, doesn't it? And just sort of... Well, listen, we've, 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 we could rabbit on. We could rabbit on. <laughs> and, but, and it's all brilliant. Let's crack on then. What are you going to... What are we going to cook today for the renovation recipe? So we're going to cook um, cavatelli, which is uh, this pasta here. So cavatelli, one of the old... Well 
one of the oldest clusters um, in the world, basically, they reckon. Yeah. Um, it's one of the oldest shapes. Um, so Caratel is very, very famous in Puglia in southern Italy. Also, the oh. uh, pasta kitchen that you mentioned, use it as one of their staple pastas. Um, so it's a really, really versatile pasta. You can use it with meat. Today, we'd actually use it with um, prawns. Mm. Oh, would they? So that's, that's, this, is, this is like a rule. This is a rule. Caratelli is with prawns, is it? It's not a rule, but cavatelli frutta di mare is one of the most classic dishes you can have. So cavatelli frutta itself to other things, but with seafood that works really, really well. And the sauce goes actually inside the cavatelli, so it works really well. Yeah, because they're, um, so I bought, so when we bought um, our pasta from you the other week, and we had the delivery, it's super fast as well, by the way, and a couple of other people that have had it delivered and said super fast, we bought six, just so if people are interested, we bought six of these, they're, fre they're fresh, and then we've just frozen them. Yeah, so you, you literally can just freeze the whole bag, don't you? Yeah, it cooks in four minutes from fresh, but about five minutes from frozen. It just takes a little bit yeah. longer. Yeah. That's one of the reasons, actually, it's really good for home renovators because all we've got here, I don't know if you... Uh, oh, she said, drop the phone. All we've got here is one single induction ring. Yes, so yes. actually, fresh pasta is fantastic, isn't it? Because you can cook the sauce, because here I'm going to have, I've only got one ring, I'm going to have to cook the sauce and then take the sauce off and cook the pasta. Because it's so fast, the sauce yes. is still warm. So perfect if you're perfect to be renovating. Let's just sort that Right. <laughs> Just tipped up there. Okay, fire away. So um, what we want to do is turn on your induction. Okay, I'm going to turn on this over And So which pan, are we using the frying pan first? Yeah, using the frying pan. Okay. Let's bring this over here. Yeah. So we've got, um, oh, in fact, actually, I'll tell you what, we'll just, um, just in case people aren't cooking with us, I'll just turn this round. So our ingredients, um, Nick sent this over uh, this week and we've put this online. So we've got cherry tomatoes and then you've cut them in two ways, haven't you? One, yeah. you're dicing them. I've still got to dice mine. I've cut those in quarters. So half of it is in quarters and half of it is diced, isn't it? And then that onion, anchovies. I haven't got any anchovies. That's fine. Is that, um, I've, got, I've got lots of wine, <laughs> um, chili and prawns and, and spinach. So really simple, actually, really simple on the ingredients front, isn't it? Right, okay. Fire away. What heat am I having, what heat am I putting my pan on at? Your pan should be, uh, depends on the different ones, but it should be quite hot, so you're going to fry up a bit this with it. problems with my <laughs> hang on that's okay i'm so having a few problems with my stick hang on you can you carry on and i'll sort this out okay. i'll listen you put the onions with my thing, Miss Morgis, you might have to just... Oh, here we go. I think we've done it. I think you might have to stay there just to make sure it doesn't fall over. So I'm putting my oil in the pan. Yeah, oil in the pan. And then my onions. You put all... Am I putting all the onions in, Nick? Yeah, all the onions. Yeah, all the onions. garlic with this as well isn't it no quite you know quite often i just throw some garlic so that's um i noticed that there was no garlic with this one so the things that normally like to use onions and garlic together so they they to use either or so this one's just with onions okay <laughs> finally diced them how long how long are we cooking the onions for about two minutes, you just put them basically softened. Okay. Just so they softened a little bit. If you didn't have a white onion, could you use red onion? Yeah, I'm using red. Oh, are you? Oh, look at you. I didn't have a red onion, I only have white. So I think it's very important in this sort of time so that you stay very flexible with the recipes. So, because if you don't have the anchovies, it's not a problem. If you had tuna, you could add tuna in as well to make it. Oh, so oh yeah. You just have to be a bit flexible. 
Well, I, you see, I had the um, anchovies because I absolutely love them, but Mr. Rogers really hates anchovies, which, you know, it's grounds for divorce, actually. Yeah, anchovies just give it a nice little sort of roundness, a nice flavour to it. So even if someone doesn't like anchovies, it just gives it a nice um, sort of rounded flavour. You're just going to stick them in anyway, are you? I think sod them. If they, and you're just going to put the anchovies in anyway, and if they don't like them, all the more for you? Yeah, that's what you can do, because it doesn't, you don't want really to taste them. You've got to have loads of them. Right. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. My onion looks like it's nearly ready. Okay, so your onion should be ready now. Just add in your chopped tomatoes. Your diced tomatoes. Um, did you, have you taken the skin off them? Sorry, because I've got a really limited um, work surface, which is yeah. going to go home anyway. Do you, um, do, you ever take the, do you ever bother taking the skins off or not, not bother now? Uh, no, that's fine with the skins off. If you're doing whole tomatoes, if you're doing big tomatoes, do you take the skins off? Yeah, you can, yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Just give it something for about a minute and then just peel them off. But on cherry tomatoes. So yeah, if, I don't know if people can hear that. You um, you just dip them in a bowl of boiling water, don't you, for about a minute, and it just makes it really easy to peel the skins off. Isn't it? Let's get some more tomatoes. A lot of things in the water. Right, so how many of you? Oh, thanks very much. How many of you in the family work in the um, work in the business? Is it all of you? Yeah, it's three of us uh, that work in the family. So my brother um, oh. and my father as well. So it's a proper, proper family business. And then we've got yeah. a bunch of employees as well in the warehouse and also in the office. Right. And do you always cook Italian food? Yeah, we do. 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 Yeah, we
wine, whether it's red or white wine, it's very important to reduce it down, boil it down yeah. by at least half to get that, because otherwise it tastes quite... Yeah. yeah, yeah, it goes quite sort of, yeah, in your face sort of taste, it's not a nice sort of... Yeah. You want to have a nice sort of steam, try and get the actual alcohol out of the, out of the wine. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to get the extra extra alcohol out when it's in the glass, but when it's in the meal, it's quite important, isn't it? Yeah. Mine's definitely, uh, mine's definitely half out. Look, I'm just having a look. While you just stir your tomatoes, I'll have a little look and see, uh, see if I've got any questions. Oh, just Julie will be ordering your gluten-free. Oh, you do gluten-free, don't you, as well? I've sent the link to a friend of mine, so if people are gluten-free and think, I can't eat that pasta, you do a massive range, don't you? Yeah, we've got 11 different shapes of gluten-free pasta, so um, they're just uh, four flour rice pasta, uh, and it took two and a half years of taste testing to get the mixture right, so it's really good with gluten-free pasta. Right, mine's boiled down now. Yep, perfect. So then you can add in your... Um, Larger tomatoes. Oh, so, okay. So we used, um, for those of you that didn't have the recipe, we've used, uh, I think it's 225 grams of cherry tomatoes, which is approximately one of those little plastic bags from the supermarket, yeah. isn't it? So 100 grams we've chopped into quarters and 100 and whatever, 10 grams we've cut up finely. So why is that? So you want you want half of them to reduce down into the sauce yeah, and then yeah. half of them to retain their shape? Yeah, half of them, just to give you two different textures when you're eating them, basically. Um, so you've got half of them that are going to go down to mush, and then the other half won't. Well, um, I'll just show I'll just show you guys what it looks like. Um, so basically, so reduce that down. Is that right? Is that about right? Is that one yeah. right, Nick? Yeah. Right. And then we're adding the other the other half in. Mm -hmm. Do you carry out, are we carrying on cooking that one? Yeah, you can carry on cooking, cooking it for another minute. One minute. This, one <laughs> this is when you add the salt and pepper as well. This is when we add what? The salt and pepper? Yeah. All right, okay. Let me get my seasoning. How much? A bit of salt. How much salt? Just a pinch. I'm oh, sorry? Just a pinch of salt. Yeah, just about, yeah, a pinch of salt and a bit of pepper. We're going to taste it before we serve it as well, so. I like salt and pepper anyway. I like, I like quite a bit of seasoning. Get spoon. from Italy because obviously if you're getting fresh pasta and olive oils how how difficult is it to actually get the products from Italy with the with the problems they've been having yeah at the moment it's fine um so even when it was worse in Italy they still let food and um lorries with food go so all of us can buy lorries so we've got a warehouse in Thatcham just near Reading and it all goes there by pallet and then um so fresh products so this would leave Puglia on the Thursday be with us on the Monday yeah. So it's very, very quick. Um, and um, yeah, it's not been any problems at all with, with um, transport at all. Yeah. The only problem that we've had with transport is um, the actual war is going back. Because Italy doesn't really import very much, it exports a lot. So say that again. Italy doesn't really import very much, it, it exports a lot. So there's lots of lorries going out, but there's not so many lorries coming back again. So that's sort of um, been a slight problem is that there's a big demand for those lorries. Yeah. So I normally I normally talk to people about tiles getting delivered from Italy. Oh, I've never no. I've never had the conversation yeah. <laughs> about uh, about pasta, but those first time for everything. Right. I, I would have thought all the tile places and things would be closed now, wouldn't they? Would be yeah. Yeah. yeah, very uh, difficult. That's everything's just kinda of stopped. So what's we doing with this? So do I take this off the heat now so they don't all you don't want these to be on heat too long so they'll all go to mush again, won't they? You can add it in your form now as well. So take it off the heat, add it in your form. Oh, quick question. So, my prawns, I've got a bag of frozen prawns from Sano's. Um, taste the difference, because I thought I'd try and get the nice one. Um, do you, 
Was I supposed to defrost these first? You were supposed to defrost them. So you put your put your pan back on again. So well, I could just I could just put them in the microwave for a minute on defrost. For a minute, yeah, yeah. So if we're if oh, if we're renovating, or right, I'll take this off. If we're renovating, um, and you're doing this recipe, you could have some frozen prawns in the freezer. Cook this up in seconds. You could add the frozen prawns to it, couldn't you, and let it cook yeah. through? Because they're yeah. defrost. It's okay cooking as long as they're cooked beforehand. The prawns. It's okay to put them in frozen and let them warm up, isn't it? Yeah, that's perfectly safe. So yeah, yeah that's completely frozen. What, what they'll do when they're frozen is they'll add a lot more um, liquid to the to the, the mixture as well, so that's also a good thing. Oh, okay. Also, um, yeah, just make sure that they're completely cooked through and they're piping hot in the centre. Yeah, yeah, so you've got to be careful if you're using raw prawns, you've got to be very careful that they're all cooked through, but if you're getting frozen ones. Yeah. And I've actually found that um, they're really handy when we've been renovating, they're really handy just having them in the fridge, aren't they? Bags of frozen prawns. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah so those are the... So if anybody, um, let me just ask while you're pouring that in, is anybody here um, big fans of Italian food? Oh, here we go. Um, Jackie is saying, I've got the pasta, I'll be ordering the wine. <laughs> oh, wait, no, actually, hi, Jackie, yeah, because you sent me a message, didn't you? Is anybody here... Um, big fans of pasta meals or is anybody actually renovating give me a thumbs up in the comments guys if you're renovating at the minute and you're finding that that you're um not eating well or are you all quite are you all quite good at looking after yourselves when you're renovating it's very difficult right. very difficult when you're in renovating to sort of like find space find time as well yeah but it's really, it's really important it's really important because renovating um is really stressful and actually, you've got to think about your health during that process, haven't you? You've got to really feed. It's fuel. Fuel is energy, and you need a lot of energy to do a renovation. It's also quite a good time to sort of like to take some time out as well from from the renovation. Yeah. yeah. Time just to sort of relax and enjoy a good meal and have a have a discussion about something else apart from the project. Yeah, it definitely it helps me to relax, and I'll come in at the end of the day and I'll come in, you know, get in this little space that we've got a temporary kitchen and just zone out, just completely zone out and. and yeah, it's important. Um, oh, just Julie saying she may have to add the wine to her order now. <laughs> right. Okay. Don't need to add the salt. Well, one second, I can't hear you because the kettle's going. So the trick to cooking pasta. Tell everybody, tell everyone what the trick to cooking good pasta is. So you want to get the water boiling. You want to add the salt just before it gets to a vigorous uh, boil. You want to add about two tablespoons per kettle. So that's a lot. That's a lot of salt, isn't it? Some people might go, "Oh, that looks too much," but it's really important, isn't it? Yeah, it's really important that the water is really well salted. So uh, some people literally say it should taste like seawater, um, so that it really does give the flavour to the to the pasta. Another minute. You want it really boiling? Do not add oil to boiling water. It just gives a horrible taste. Don't, oh, so that's well, that's interesting. So. Do not ever put oil. People put oil in the water with pasta to stop it sticking together, don't they? That's why. And it's a complete fallacy, is it? That's a very vehement shake of the head there, Nick. <laughs> yeah, no, you shouldn't do. Um, like I said before, if you've got good oil, then you, we've got everything on our side to keep the heat down with your oil. Yeah. You can press it afterwards, that's fine. You can put oil um, on afterwards, but actually when it's, um, when it's boiling, it'll just taste rancid, really. Um, so yeah. don't really want that. And also, it does make the pasta a lot slipperier. So what? Okay. Oh. All right. So don't want slippy pasta. Mine's okay. just coming up to the boil now. Perfect. And then you put the pasta. So mine's still coming up to the boil. I'll have to wait a couple of minutes just to um, just to get it really hot. So don't. Um, 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 no way am I going to put my pasta into lukewarm water. No way, not have to be told by the expert. Yeah, and it's got to be boiling, it's got to be boiling. So how have you found it whilst this is coming up to the boil? How have you found it then? Have people 
um, have people started ordering online? I know I have and I know some of my friends have ordered from you, but have you found that all of a sudden your customer base has changed in the last two or three weeks? Yeah, the customer base has really changed um, and it's, it's a lot more work um, sent to the public because yeah. pick one of this and one of that, whereas it would be like a case of this and a case of that. But the rewards are so nice as well is because we never really get feedback from the actual final customer because we sell to shops or we sell to restaurants. Um, so we've had some amazing messages from people and the, the reviews there on the actual website have gone crazy. Um, and like five star reviews everyone's leaving, which is amazing. So it's really, really, really sort of touching really that you get all this feedback from people um, because we just it only. Um, so so how, will, how will that be then going forward when, you know, when lockdown is... When lockdown is over, um, it's interesting, isn't it? Do you as a company then just revert back to how you were doing things before? Or do you think it will change your business model and you'll actually have a kind of, you know, a part of the company which is customer focusing and a part which then also deals with restaurants and market halls? Yeah, I think it'll be a mixture of both, really, because obviously our um, shops and everything, some of them are still open, but the majority of them are closed. Um, so yeah. that and the restaurants are really, really important for us. Um, and we've built up a, a long, sort of nice relationship with those people. Um, but also it's it's nice to have to have the um, individual customers and it's also quite fun to be able to do things like this. So normally on a Friday, I would, I would be sort of calling customers and things. So it's nice to be able to get into the kitchen at lunchtime and um, actually show you how to cook some pasta. So do you, did you imagine that, you know, six weeks ago, you'd be cooking Cavatelli live to an Instagram <laughs> audience? Look at your face. You said, I suggest you went, I'm going to cook live. Cook live. Yeah, no, I still didn't think I would be doing it. Yeah, it's, it's good, isn't it? These, all right, I've just thrown my, just put my prawns in, so I'm just going to give those a, a mix through. Yeah, that's my nice go around. But actually, these times, you know, the, that we're facing, so many people that run businesses are having to do things that are completely out of their comfort zone. Yeah. Presumably, if I'd have said this to you six weeks ago, this was, I mean, I wasn't cooking live from our house six weeks ago. So so these these sort of events have thrown people way out, haven't they? Yeah, they throw people, but it's a nice opportunity for people. It's a nice opportunity to be able to, to educate people, to be able to show people tips that we've picked up from dealing with restaurants. Um, but also just to sort of inter interact with people. So social media has been something that we've never really done before, but it's been really nice doing it. It's a lot of work doing it. It's a, like a full-time job. Um, but it's nice to be able to interact with people. Getting feedback from people is just amazing. Yeah. I'm just going to get my salt, actually. My salt. So... Keep stirring your pasta. Keep stirring it. Right, so four minutes, aren't I? So it's about four minutes, isn't it? Fine. Yep. The only way you can make really the pasta's cooked is actually with this. So um, you just want to actually try the pasta when when you get to the cooking time or a little bit before. So the best way to have pasta is out there, so it's going to have a, a slight bite to it. Um, but it will cook in the sauce or whatever. So if you're having it in a broth or something, it will still cook, keep cooking in that broth. So you want to go sort of more under the over it. You can always cook so is it a good? A, sorry, say this again. You can always cook it a little bit more, but you can't undercook it again. So it's like a steak. You can't go from well done back well, to red. On um, would you suggest then if it, the recipe says four minutes or five minutes, you suggest cooking it for a minute under that and then adding the sauce and just cooking it through a little bit? Because people Italians throw a little bit of the pasta water in as well, then don't they? Yeah. So. Pasta water gives it um, a more of a starchy um, effect, so it makes it more of a sauce, uh, sort of sticks to the pasta more, um, and it basically just um, makes the sauce a lot more silky as well. So we're going to add a little bit of pasta water in as well. Did you add the? Did you add the, the whole? Um, <laughs> did you put the time wrong? This this Rogers is wandering around here. I know he can sense this food coming, so he's showing me a timer. <laughs> I've got, oh, I've got one minute to go on my pasta bag. Did you put the whole bag in when you did it? I put half, half the bag in. Half the bag. I think I've probably put slightly more than half the bag in. Okay, that's fine. Got a big one. I did one, I, I cooked one the other night, um, one of the cavatellis, and there were four of us, and the whole bag, and that easily fed the four yeah. of us, the whole, the, the, the bag. Yeah, normally 500 grams of fresh pasta doesn't go as far as 500 grams of dry. 
Yeah. What, how many? Oh, how many that one? Is these, are these 500 grams? Yeah, they're 500 grams. But there'll be, there'll be four people, whereas 500 grams of fresh will be about five people. Uh, Not with appetites like my lot. <laughs> right, I think we're I think we're good then. So I need a little bit. Oh, no. I need to save a little bit of the water, do I? Or drain the pasta. So save a little bit of the salty water and drain the rest. One second, turn off. <laughs> Yeah, so that's quite important. Don't throw all your people, don't throw all your water away. Save a little bit. Let's just have it. Yeah. So you're going to, I'm going to put the pasta back into the pasta pan. Yeah, put the pasta back into the pasta pan. Spoon a few spoons of your sauce in. This is very important so that you um, actually coat the pasta in the sauce. What's the, what's very important? So I've got my pasta in the pasta pan, and then yep. what put the in your pan? And what's about the water? Do I put the water in on the pasta first, back in? Put it, put it like this, and then add a tiny bit of water. Oh, All right. Okay. Add the sauce. Tiny bit of water. And just give it a stir. And it's more healthy to add a little bit of the water than oil, isn't it? Yeah, so just add a bit of the water. This is where you can add oil if you want to. If you want to add some extra virgin olive oil, you can add it now. Okay. But you can add a tiny bit of your spinach. Oh, spinach. So I'm adding the spinach before I've put the sauce on. You've got to put, so you drain the pasta. Put it back into the pan, add a bit of your sauce, add a bit of pasta water. I couldn't hear that bit, sorry, it's a bit noisy here. That's okay. And just... I'll show. So is that, hang on. So I've added the sauce. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. I've still, I've still got some sauce there. Yeah. And you just make up. Oh, spinach. Hang on. Now the um, now the things off again. I'm back where you are now. So you've got your spinach in. You've got some of your sauce. Yeah. Put it into the pot. Into the. embellishment on the side. Yeah, some restaurants will put all the pasta in if they're doing it in um, 104. But normally you would have it like this and then you can just use some of the advantage. Excellent. So I think you just 
Just give me a sec. This is a bit full. Just hold my legs and I think I need to get a new one. Just hold this up. There you go. Oh, that's it. Right, so I'm putting some of the pasta on. Do I need a bit more pasta? Yeah, that's, that's great. And then, and then spoon some of the sauce on the top. Yeah, some of the sauce on top. That's it. So in the sauce as well, if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it a bit heavier, you could add some butter to make it a bit creamier. Um, but it's perfectly fine like this. If you wanted a lighter, lighter option. Oh. And an extra prawn for good luck. And you can drizzle some oil on if you want to as well. Oh, my dear. And that's your dish. I think that's cool. There's a drizzle. Oh. Um, I don't want to put too much on. Should I get a little, one of those little... Oh. Let's have a look. Look at that. Well done. Looking very good. Cheers. Cheers. Marvellous. Oh, did you enjoy that, everybody? Oh, I feel a bit sweaty now. <laughs> there we go. And that was, and that was, is that nearly tip off then? You dived because Mr. Rogers is hanging around, honestly. Like one of the, I'm surprised the cats aren't here. Well done. Cheers. Cheers. And actually, we've been chatting, haven't we? We've been chatting all the way through. But that is literally a 15 or 20 minute dish. Yeah. If you didn't have, you didn't have fresh pasta by the time the normal pasta is cooked the dry pasta your sauce is done it's very very quick this is something that i have when you get home late at night or something this something you put it in the freezer you can just chuck the prawns in like you said it's just yeah. a very meal, but a very sort of nice meal thank you so much thank you so much nick for taking time out of your because it is your working day because actually unlike a lot of us um at home on furlough or at home you know homeschooling you are actually working shipping yeah. out orders and dealing with the internet and all of that kind of stuff so you've taken time out of your day to do this and i really appreciate it um, thank you for, for yeah importing such amazing ingredients and um, should we test this should we get should we i think we need to um i think we need to have a tester just one second come over here i think somebody needs to just test <laughs> Love it. The best part of the day. <laughs> Shall we have the official the official tasting? Mm. 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 <laughs> that's the noise. That's a that's a good noise. Mm. That's a good no mm. That's a good noise from Mr. Morgis. It's a thumbs up from Morgis HQ. I think mm. I, I'm not going to eat it because then I'll just end up with a mouthful of prawn. But I think we need to do another one at some point. Definitely, we'll come up with another recipe. Yeah. And um, yeah, um, and hopefully all of you, I'll share this, and you'll all, you can all go on to to Nita Marmorelli's website and get some pasta ordered. Brilliant. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Take care. See you soon. Good luck with the wine launch as well. Yeah, on Tuesday. Tuesday's wine. Bye. See you later. Hey, there you go. Oh, that was useful and interesting. I think I need a new arm for my phone. I don't know how many times that fell over, but literally, I mean, we were gassing, weren't we? We were chatting and we were learning a little bit more about Italian produce and, and about Nick's company. But actually... That was a really fast recipe. So when you've got fresh pasta, you only need the one induction hob. Um, make a bit of a sauce, put the sauce to one side, cook your pasta, throw it on, and there you go. Fantastic meal. It's not wrapped in plastic. It's not a ready meal full of um, sugar. It's something that will keep you healthy and well-fed and, and on target to finish your renovation. So there you go. Right. I'm quite warm, and I've got pasta to eat. So I hope that was good fun. Thank you for joining us, and I will see you tomorrow at one o'clock uh, in your home how to reuse space how to go up into the loft how to do a garage conversion um all those kind of things and a little, little bit about the sort of work that joe does as well she works for the national trust so really interesting lady and a really good friend of mine so i'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock take